be crying in three, two, one. Be a doctor. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> oh. I felt like I did so bad. And I told you, you, you always underestimate yourself. <laughs> the camera off. I'm being late for my meeting for this. <laughs> Look at the camera and smile. Don't guy so fast and never see guys. <laughs> 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 sáng nay, sáng nay nó có nó gửi email nó nói còn được giàu rồi. Sorry you guys had to witness me ugly cry. Um I hope you got some giggles out of it, but that was just my unfiltered raw emotion when I received my first medical school acceptance back in October and it was just such a huge wave of relief and excitement and happiness that I am going to become a physician I'm gonna to go to medical school and be able to really pursue my dreams and be in an environment where everyone is has that same drive and that same passion for helping others now that some time has passed and we are coming up on June I'm also happy to share that was the first of my three acceptances to medical school and I feel so so grateful being able to say that going into this process I had like no expectations whatsoever I didn't think that I would get into one medical school let alone three and I think it stems from this lack of self-confidence because when I see other people talking about their medical school journey and sort of like their backgrounds and their stats I I don't see myself like being on par with them. A part of that is because I realized that my stats are lower compared to that of the matriculating class as well as my struggle with communicating my thoughts during stressful situations like interviewing. While editing this video I realized that putting my self-worth and having stats be like the source of my insecurity is a very very toxic mentality to have. When it comes down to it you know yes stats are one thing but the types of experiences that you have as an individual is really going to be the thing that differentiates you in the field of medicine and having this diversity of thought is the thing that is going to allow medicine to progress and allow us to provide more informed care to our patients that's one of the things that i realized when i was shadowing is that the people that i found to provide the best care and to be like the most interesting are people who have gone through like a non-traditional path to medicine and they've worked in a variety of different fields because they are bringing like fresh perspective from the other fields that they worked at that is not something that everyone can say that they bring to the table and when it comes to being a physician in the u.s where you are dealing with such a diverse population more diverse than anywhere else in the world those experiences is going to make a huge difference. We should take a step back and place less of an emphasis on stats and using that to determine our self-worth because it really doesn't. I know there are a lot of videos out there that are similar to this, but we all come from different walks of life and through my story, I hope I can sort of be a refuge and be there to encourage and motivate you if you're you know, feeling similar sense of insecurity or you have a similar background to mine. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ni. Nee. I am an incoming medical school student for the fall of 2022 and I'm super excited about it. And if I look familiar to you, it's probably because you came from my other channel. Some stuff happened there so I had to cancel it and restart a new channel. So I truly apologize for that if you were previously subscribed. But I have re-uploaded all of my previous content. But if you're new here and you are applying to medical school this cycle, go check those videos out because I talk about personal statement, work and activity section, as well as letters of rec. I think those would be really helpful if you are unsure where to start or how to write compelling essays to get you those acceptances. But today I'm going to be giving you like an overview of my journey to medicine and a little bit of background about myself. So let's just get started. I am a Vietnamese immigrant. My parents immigrated with my brother and I to the US when I was about seven. And it 
was a really, really challenging time having to adjust to this different environment and learning this new language. I also come from a low income background, which I talked about in my disadvantaged essay. If you are interested in hearing more about that or how to approach your disadvantaged essay, please leave it in the comments below and I will be happy to make a video talking about it. As for college, I went to the University of Washington where I majored in biochemistry. Now going into college, I already had an interest in medicine and so I really wanted to use that time efficiently to explore what medicine is really all about and because of that, really early on, I became involved in medical related organizations and club like the Vietnam Health Clinic. Just to give you guys a little bit of background, um, they're a student-run organization that aims to provide primary care to individuals in rural areas of Vietnam and this was such a wonderful first experience for me because it reaffirmed my interest in medicine, but more specifically, it reaffirmed my passion for working with individuals from medically underserved backgrounds. With this club, there's also like a lot more that's involved in it. So that's mainly the thing that I did from January to the summer of my freshman year. Then once I entered my sophomore year, I wanted to see what healthcare is like in the hospital setting. So I applied to be a volunteer at the UW Medical Center where I originally worked as a patient escort taking patients to the places that they need to go within the hospital or for discharge. Six months after that, I uh, I guess I graduated to the medical oncology ICU. I would highly recommend doing something like that if you're interested in comparing and contrasting like the type of medical environment that you could see yourself working in. So I did that for about a year. And then during the summer of my sophomore year, I did a summer internship with Kaiser Permanente working with their ophthalmology department to mitigate patient overload, which was a huge problem since they have a lot of sites and just trying to figure out how to best redistribute resources to help alleviate that issue. I got to see sort of the administrative side of medicine and how important that is to the patient experience and how that um, impacts the patient's ability to access medicine. So that was a really eye-opening experience for me as well. Moving on to my junior year, I became a college mentor with the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship Program. The students in this program are um, first-gen students, so it kind of reminded me of the time when I really struggled with the whole college process and how to find resources and connecting with the right people to do the things that I want to do. So I really enjoyed being a mentor there. And then in spring of my junior year, I got a research position at an immunology lab where I was involved in a few really exciting projects, um, working with shingles and syphilis. I was actually notified that the shingles project that I assisted on is getting submitted to a journal and I'm going to be a co-author. That's just like so crazy to me. And then the summer of my junior year, I just took the two months to study for my MCAT because I really wanted to apply to medical school during May of my senior year since I only wanted to take one gap year total. But um, as you all know, the panini freaking hit during March. So I sort of had to take a step back and reevaluate how strong my application was to apply to medical school that cycle and realized that it wasn't worth my time and effort just to go for it. So I decided to take an additional gap year. But before I get to what I did in my gap year, I just want to say that in my senior year, I also did volunteering with um, individuals who are experiencing homelessness to just really understand the health disparities more and the kind of challenges that individuals from those populations are facing. So now we're going to talk about what I did in my gap year. I graduated in June of 2020 and like I said earlier, the panini hit and I had to reevaluate. I was sort of going through the current list of activities that I have and saw that I was lacking in patient interaction, clinical hours type work. So that's why I decided to quickly enroll in a CNA program after I graduated. I actually only had like two weeks off and then I was like into my CNA program right away. I did that for two months and then I officially became a CNA in August of that year working at an assisted living facility where I worked with elderly individuals, assisting them with activities of daily living, 
but I also took some time to get additional training to assist with medication as well as nurse delegation training so that my scope of practice could be broadened and I could be involved in a more proactive way. Loved my CNA experience. Um, I learned so much about helping individuals who are in a compromised state of health and working together with them, um, comforting them, as well as working as a part of a healthcare team. If you guys are also thinking about being a CNA, let me know in the comments down below. I would be super excited to make a video about it, just going into more depth about my experience as well as actually contrasting the different types of healthcare settings that CNAs can work at because each of those settings is going to provide you with a different experience. So let me know. Let me know if you guys want to see that. Or you guys might be interested in comparing the different jobs that pre-meds usually do during their gap year like EMT, MA, scribing, CNA, etc. So just comparing what the training is like and what you gain out of it, I would be happy to make that as well. Moving forward, I worked as a CNA for about a year and four months. And during the time that I was working as a CNA, I started applying for medical school. It was super challenging to work and apply to med school at the same time, especially I have to work overtime. And if you're familiar, CNAs were often very short staffed. That aside, I began kind of brainstorming and writing my personal statement in January. And then I think around March, I started working on my work and activities section. I submitted my application the first date that I could, which was May 25th. After I submitted my primary application, I took uh, two weeks off of not doing any med school stuff. But after those two weeks, I got back onto the grind and started pre-writing my secondaries because I know that I'm most likely going to get secondaries for all those schools since not many schools do that preliminary screening process before they send you a secondary. I didn't want to be bombarded with all those essays while I was working. So it really worked really hard to pre-write. Secondaries came around, submitted that, got interviews in August. Um, I had a total of six interview invites spread out, out across from August until January. I got my first acceptance in October 15th, which was the very first date that any med school could notify their applicants of an acceptance. So I was super, super excited. I continued working as a CNA until December of 2021. At that point, I had already gotten the acceptances that I was happy with. So I wanted to resign from my CNA job and to take that time to grow more personally and to enjoy my hobbies and to sort of relax a little bit before med school starts. And that brings us to today. So I just realized that I forgot to mention my stats as well as how many schools that I applied to, how many interviews I got. So really quick, um, my science GPA is a 3.43. My all other GPA is a 3.99, which makes my cumulative a 3.69. And my MCAT, which I took once, is a 5.12, which landed me in the 85th percentile. I applied to 20 schools, got 20 secondaries, ended up getting six interview invites. I went to five of those interviews, got uh, three acceptances, one post interview rejection, and then one post interview waitlist. So like I mentioned earlier, my stats are not spectacular. They're not the top of the top compared to that of the matriculating class, but I feel like my story, the theme that I had, the way I presented myself during my interviews were the key factors that got me those acceptances. So if you're feeling unconfident in your stats, as long as you are able to communicate why you're stats might be lower and have a really strong reason for going into medicine, I think you are going to be fine. And that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching and as always, best wishes, warmest regards. Until next time, bye!